Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Internet Rights and Principles Coalition uh, annual meeting. My name is Minda, and I am moderating this uh, very exciting session on Internet Futures and the Climate Crisis, Paths to Sustainability or Extinction. This session um, has a breakout format, um, so we hope that this will allow plenty of room for discussion. Uh, and for the breakout groups, you just need to follow uh, the facilitator with, uh, with one of the, the colors. Um, but uh, uh, so on this panel and for this session, we will have, uh, first we will start with some presentations from uh, the Feminist Internet, uh, which is a non-profit uh, organization based in London and UK. Uh, and then we'll have Fridays for Future, uh, the movement, because they couldn't be here, so uh, we will have them here anyway. Um, later, we will go to our panel discussion, and we will have uh, Chris Adams here from Climate Action Tech, uh, Christopher Hulk over there, um, Extinction Rebellion and International Labor Organization. Um, I think we're still missing Constance Burger. Uh, yes, um, she would be the uh, government representative. And then we also have Lia Rosa Oltreta, uh, <laughs> civil society and our youth uh, representation. Um, for the breakout groups, uh, we also have June Paris, uh, is uh, one of our members for the IRPC, and uh, Nick Shorey over there. Um, uh, cybercrime and internet security specialist. Uh, we are all, both of them joining Leah and Chris. Uh, I'm the on-site moderator for this session. Uh, Gustavo Souza is the uh, remote moderation for this session. Uh, Marion Franklin, just over there, uh, is going to be the rapporteur for this session and Marion is also a member of the RPC and uh, uh, represents also Goldsmiths University of London. Uh, so before we start our panel discussion today, uh, let me just talk a little bit about the Internet Rights and <coughs> Principles Dynamic Coalition uh, for those who haven't heard about us before. Uh, and uh, we are an open uh, network of individuals and organizations uh, based here at the Internet Governance Forum committed to making human rights and principles work for the online environment. So we are one of the 17 coalitions, uh, I think 17 currently uh, at uh, IGF. Um, since 2014, we are also uh, observers to the Council of Europe Steering Committee on Media and Freedom of Information, the CDMSI. Uh, our main output, uh, some of you already know, is the Charter of Human Rights and Principles for the Internet, um, which has been published in 10 languages at the moment. Uh, we have seven here, uh, so if you want one copy, please feel free. Um, and uh, the Charter has uh, 21 rights and 10 broad principles, out, all of them also uh, translated in 26 different languages. Um, so today, we are very excited that we've been launching the French edition of the Charter. Uh, so thanks to our RPC member, Rigobert Camogne, and uh, the Swiss Ofcom uh, for their generous support. Uh, so it's really, really exciting to have all uh, these 10 translations, uh, the Russian still uh, waiting for the layout format, and, uh, but also the Kurdish and the Farsi. Uh, so it's really, 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 really interesting that finally we get them all together uh, at the IGF. <laughs> and so please free to take a copy uh, later on. Uh, if you would like to get more involved uh, in the work uh, of the RPC, please feel free to join our mailing list. Uh, you can join our social networks, or you can, uh, uh, if you want to get more directly involved, join our steering committee, which uh, uh, soon we will have our annual elections, so just keep an eye on it, and uh, you can join uh, if, if you'd like to get more directly involved in our work. 
so for today's session, uh, we will be focusing on the Charter of Human Rights and Principles for the Internet and our Article 4, that is the right to development through the Internet. Uh, and Clause B here is the most important one for us today, environmental sustainability. The Internet must be used in a sustainable way. This relates to the disposal of your waste and to the use of the Internet for protection of the environment. This obviously also relates to the sustainable development goals, uh, more directly on this one, the uh, uh, number 13, climate action. Um, so now I would like to go to our first presentation that comes from the feminist internet. Uh, and this is based on a recent project called Designing an Ecological Alexa. Uh, so uh, let's go directly to there. Is it here? Go from the beginning. Okay. All right. How can we uncover the enormous impact internet connected technologies have on the environment? And what steps and considerations can designers and artists take to mitigate against large scale environmental damage? Designing an ecological Alexa is a project created by Feminist Internet and supported by UAL's Creative Computing Institute. A one-day workshop hosted at Impact Festival in October was created to investigate the role of technology within the current climate crisis. The workshop asked students to design a personal intelligent assistant that meets an ecological need and promotes environmentally conscious design. With an estimated 2.71 billion smartphone users in the world and a prediction of 20 billion connected devices by 2020, increasing attention needs to be drawn to the ecological impact of the production and use of everyday technologies. However, because of unclear supply chains, overpowering marketing language and our reliance on technology, it can be difficult to unpick the planetary impact of these devices from their central role in daily life. We urgently need people to work together to tackle these issues, producing creative responses that heighten awareness and shift the future of the planet. Feminist Internet are a non-profit organisation on a mission to make the internet more equal for all through creative, critical practice. Starting with a body of work called Designing a Feminist Alexa, we have explored the implicit patriarchal biases and injustices that are embedded within technologies. The Ecolexa project took this a step further, suggesting that these same oppressive forces are fueling our anthropocentric and desire-driven design processes. By creating an economy out of data and driving up digital consumption, our online behaviours are generating massive carbon footprints and electronic waste at the expense of the Earth's climate and resources. Placing the workshop at the intersection of human rights and environmental advocacy, we hope to conceptualise more responsible, ethical and sustainable ways of designing for the future of the internet and our planet. With participants, we discussed an enormous spectrum of problems, highlighting the physical impacts of the seemingly immaterial space of the internet. We also acknowledged the effects of exploitative tech labour and climate change upon those living in the global south. We worked with subject experts and creative practitioners, Natalie Kane and Tobias Ravel of Haunted Machines, Tom Jarrett from Normally Studio, and Chris Decker of Low Tech Magazine to introduce experiments and provocations into the workshop. To support the process, we created a feminist design tool in collaboration with researcher Josie Young. The tool consists of eight prompts that deepen how designers think about the values they embed within their design as they create it. The questions aim to make their design better by ensuring it avoids perpetuating biases or inequalities while addressing an environmental need or a climate injustice. The resulting projects ranged from phone apps to smart objects, all of which aim to reduce data consumption and encourage environmentally conscious habits within their user groups. They included a lightweight AICII mapping system, apps which helped users shop for local seasonal produce, a dynamo powered PIA, and a mirror which offered statistics and advice regarding the user's digital carbon footprint. And uh, thank you, uh, Feminist Internet, for this uh, great presentation. How can uh, we uncover the enormous impact internet connected technologies sorry. have on the environment? Um, back to our presentation. Uh, so thank you very much. And now we're going to the uh, Fridays for Future. 
uh, which also have a message to the IGF. Ja, also ich bin Hanna Piro bei Fails for Future seit ungefähr Dezember und mache in verschiedenen AGs Dinge. Zum Beispiel organisiere ich auch das Essen für Streiks. Ich bin Carla Wiegmann, bin seit März in der ähm, Ortsgruppe von Fails for Future und ich organisiere vor allem die Streiks und kümmere mich auch um Strukturaufgaben. Das Internet bringt uns als Bewegung sehr, sehr viel, weil wir damit natürlich global viel mehr Menschen erreichen können. Und es ist ja auch eine globale Bewegung. Wir wollen auf die ganze Welt achten und wir wollen Menschenleben in der ganzen Welt ähm, schützen. Und deshalb ist das Internet unglaublich wichtig für uns. Genau, und wir versuchen auch, wenn wir jetzt uns um neue Netzwerke bemühen, mit denen wir effizienter arbeiten können, dass diese auch möglichst CO2-neutral sind. Das heißt, dass irgendwie wir versuchen, Netzwerke zu nutzen, die klimaschädliche Investitionen ähm, eher nicht tolerieren irgendwie und wir versuchen, dass wir Netzwerke benutzen, die vor allen Dingen erneuerbare Energien als Energiequelle haben. Vor allen Dingen sind Solaranlagen toll. Also ich glaube, Google hat jetzt ein riesen Solarfeld gekauft. Also es ist auf jeden Fall schon mal ein sehr guter Anfang, aber es reicht natürlich nicht. Also da müssen wirklich sehr, sehr viele erstmal Organisationen, das heißt ähm, Internetfirmen hinterstehen, aber auch der Staat muss da ein Auge drauf haben und irgendwie die Politik muss da auch vielleicht Aufmerksamkeit drauf lenken, dass die Unternehmen etwas tun müssen. Ja, und ganz wichtig ist natürlich auch, dass man erstmal sieht, dass es möglich ist. Das bestätigt die Wissenschaft schon seit langem. Nur, dass wir wirklich anfangen zu handeln, ist das Problem meistens in der Politik, bei den Firmen. Dass es nicht mehr um Profit geht, sondern dass es darum geht, dass es allen gut geht und dem Planeten vor allem gut geht. Ich finde es extrem wichtig, dass äh, das IGF sich mal mit dem Thema Klima auseinandersetzt. Ich weiß nicht, was da vorher so passiert ist, aber ich glaube, Klima muss einfach das Thema sein, wo sich gerade alle mit auseinandersetzen. Weil das ist wirklich eine Klimakrise. Manche haben es vielleicht noch nicht begriffen, aber wenn wir jetzt nicht schnell handeln, dann passiert äh, ein riesiges Unglück und dann werden sehr, sehr viele Menschen daran sterben und deshalb muss gerade im Bereich Internet äh, irgendwie sehr viel passieren, weil Internet ist auch total präsent und Internet ist eines der größten Probleme bei CO2-Emissionen. Ja. Genau und wir brauchen auch vor allen Dingen jetzt Unternehmen oder Foren, die vor allen Dingen Vorreiter sind. Wir brauchen gute Beispiele und ich glaube, das IGF kann das auf jeden Fall werden, weil man braucht halt einfach motivierte Menschen, die sich auch der Sache aneignen wollen, denen das wichtig ist. Und das ist eigentlich immer so, dass man einfach Menschen braucht, die Vorbild sind, damit man dann Trittbrettfahrer hat, die dann denken, ja, das wollen wir auch so machen. Gerade unsere Bewegung konnte auch nur wegen des Internets so stark wachsen. Also wir sind sehr gut vernetzt und haben in unseren Ortsgruppen haben wir Chats und wir haben auch Foren, wo wir uns austauschen können, auch mit ausländischen Fridays for Future Bewegungen. Also ich glaube, wir hätten ohne das Internet nie das erreicht, was wir jetzt erreicht haben. Deswegen ist das Internet für uns auch so wichtig und deswegen wollen wir auch gar nicht, dass das Internet jetzt runtergefahren wird oder so, sondern wir wollen einfach nur, dass auch im Thema Internet und im Thema Netzwerkstruktur sich das Denken verändert. Ja, also ich bin Hanna Piro bei Fridays for Future seit ungefähr Dezember und mache in verschiedenen AGs Dinge, zum Beispiel Organisationen. Uh, thank you, uh, Anna and uh, Carl, for uh, these uh, great presentation. Um, I also wanted to mention that uh, this session today uh, follows already our previous meeting last year, uh, and also the footsteps of others who have been trying to bring the environmental issues to the uh, IGF. Uh, namely the um, dynamic coalition on climate change that uh, has, uh, is, has not been working uh, in the last few years. And also Michael Ogier, uh, thank you very much for all this. Um, uh, so I would like now to um, uh, make a few questions to uh, our panel today. Um, and my first question to the panel, so for everyone the same, would be what do you consider to be the most pressing issues in the relationship between internet and the climate crisis? And what do you think that uh, the IGF community can uh, do about it? So it's uh, three minutes each. Sorry, please, we have little time. Uh, so we could start possibly with Chris. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> can you, wow, it's like the voice of God. Okay. Uh, I think one of the key things that we need to be thinking about if we're talking about the internet is that the internet runs on electricity and that electricity has to come from somewhere. And I, th I kind of think that one of the most important things for us to do is have a kind of coherent worldview about the role of the internet and the role of how we work 
uh, first before we start thinking about anything else from here. And uh, I kind of want to kind of like suggest to you that the that I think if we think about the way the internet works, an internet that runs on fossil fuels should be considered faulty because it's causing avoidable harm that we don't need to actually be causing anymore. And I think most of us w realize that the internet is an incredibly useful tool, but as it stands, there is unavoidable harm caused by it every single time we download a file or send something like that. And I feel that that's one of the first things we should be addressing. And I feel that this is one thing that we should start talk, be able to kind of have kind of frank conversations with uh, in the organizations we work at, and also have an understanding about the impact of like carbon and the role that carbon is actually playing. I think uh, in technology, a lot of us are, we may mean well, but we are functionally illiterate when it comes to talking about carbon. And I think that, that this is the key uh, determining factor uh, in how we work. And I think we need to kind of just invest in some skills and invest in the ability to talk about this uh, and think about how we deploy resources, how we purchase things uh, to basically, ch uh, to and use this to inform policy. There are examples where you are seeing this. So the W3C this year have started talking about carbon emissions in their own ethical web principles. And I think that you are seeing some uh, you, you are seeing some cases where large organizations like, say, Google and Microsoft are actually doing, making some headway. But at the same time, there are also, we also are having conversation. We are also seeing cases where the, 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 organized, the people who actually run the internet or, or basically provide most of the infrastructure, these are the same companies that are aggressively aiding the extraction of fossil fuels from the ground. And like, this is not like a, and, and this is something that we need to be able to talk about internally. So, well, okay, if we are, if we're gonna be relying on innovation and these kind of changes to basically be the kind of great hope of the future, then we need to have a kind of coherent worldview inside organizations and be able to count carbon and realize that that's the single thing that we need to track more than anything else. I mean, we have seen reports recently come out show that we need to be reducing emissions at around 10%, around 8% year on year, but if we wanna stay within 1.5 degrees of uh, warming, which is largely what we consider to be something that's going to avoid the worst of uh, the kind of the, the, the changing climate. Now, the last time we saw uh, drops in emissions like that was basically the Soviet, the collapse of the Soviet Union, right? So we, I don't think we fully understand just how much we need to change here. And I think we have left it so late that we need to actually have some pretty radical change in how we think about the web and how we think about, well, pretty much everything we do of which technology is part of. And uh, Although it's although like globally speaking, the tech industry and like in, and like the use of the internet is relatively small. We're about two percent of emissions. We are we are so much easier to fix than other industries. And I think that if we can't get our own house in order, it's going to be very difficult for us to achieve some of the other ones. And we are a very well resourced, very mobile group. So we should be doing something about this. It's an ethical uh, uh, it's an ethical it's an ethical issue from my point of view. Thank you, Chris. Um, maybe now we could have uh, Christopher Holt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, let me start by saying that I do agree with you that we need to fix the power sources of the internet, but I don't think it's such an easy task because we also need to fix the power relations on the internet. Because I think that the impact of those business models that govern the digital economy today is much, much greater than just the impact of the technology that the internet runs on. Uh, platform business models, what they do basically is they make markets more efficient, they make nice to have but not essential goods cheaper, and they do advertisement. Those are the three major business models. And basically on a planet that is so clearly headed towards mass extinction, the last thing we need is to use our best technologies for stuff like advertisement. Jeff Bezos once, once put it, uh, this way that, that they, he wants to know wishes before needs. We need an economy that serves needs, not the other way around. And this is why I think the first thing we need to do is accept how existential this crisis is and redirect our innovation towards a path that is actually safe. But I also think we shouldn't stop there because innovation alone is not enough. Um, we've tried to leave the solution to the climate crisis to market-based innovation for 40 years, and by now we know very safely that it hasn't worked. Um, the internet, one, one good thing it, it does, or the, the so-called sharing economy, one good thing uh, it promised was to replace physical goods by more sustainable services, but 
if you have expensive goods and you substitute them with cheap services, you still end up consuming more. This is why we have so many smartphones, because we have the free information goods, and then we end up buying more complementary physical goods that are unsustainable. So uh, this is why I think innovation, even if we redirect it, we still also need to rein in markets, and we can't leave it to an idea like green growth that has been proven not to work for 40 years. I wanted to start this actually by reminding us of, of some of the really basic facts, and I'm sorry if this is boring or uncomfortable, but we have eight years left to get to net zero emissions. Countries like Germany have much less time if, if we consider only some aspects of climate justice. We won't be able to do this without major changes in how we govern the economy. So I'm, I'm here for Extinction Rebellion, and the essential demand of uh, Extinction Rebellion is to introduce um, citizens' assemblies um, that will be able to make at least some of the decisions that are necessary. I would go even further and say that we need to democratize the digital economy by stuff like platform co-ops, uh, democratic data governance models, um, maybe union-based uh, platform worker assemblies, um, other formats. But uh, yeah, I, j I just wanted to really stress that this is an existential crisis and a time to ask existential questions. Thank you, Christopher. Okay. <laughs> uh, would you like to say something else? To add? Yeah. If I have the time, I can use it to point out that um, people in the global south, but also people like Fridays for Future, have been fighting this for decades, and we still have no climate policy that deserves its name. So maybe I can just use this moment uh, for a little call. Most of us are in very privileged positions, so please um, think really hard about whether you want to join this fight in some way or another. Thanks. Thank you. Leah? <laughs> okay, it's always a bit hard to follow up on so many good comments already. I can definitely agree with my, um, with you two. Um, for ex I mean, we can already start with the most obvious fact, which is the hardware behind it, which was already talked about as well, with almost, I think, 3.5 billion internet users nowadays. It is obviously a very, very urgent issue to really address where this energy is coming from that they're using, especially for their server operations. I think how we saw it in Fridays for Future, for example, who I talked to, they really trying, they try to make sure to pick those companies that do something about it, that do have service or like that do use renewable energy specifically. And I do think that technically it is, it is hard, but I think it is a subject or a problem that we can tackle with technological advances and also just a serious amount of commitment, which I think the IGF can really work on. I think it is important to bring governmental representatives and especially also private representatives from companies like Google, who did not join us today, actually. Um, that's not true. Oh, that's not true. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, you did join. Maybe I didn't. <laughs> okay. Never mind then. So it is important to like get us all on the table. That's what I wanted to say because I think, I think it is very, it is a topic we need to make more visible because I think, for example, the transportation sector is way more obvious as its subject because we use it every day. We can see it physically, and the internet itself is almost it feels invisible. So I think it is very important to really get companies behind it. Like for example, Google <laughs> bought a massive solar plant, which for example our Fridays for Future representatives said as well. But another important point I wanted to make is a bit more, maybe a bit more tricky because it's way more about what is talked about on the internet. Because climate, the climate crisis is a very emotional topic for several reasons that I'm sure you know about. It's very, the idea of extinction is obviously very frightening. And it's also, that's why it is a very easy target for, mis for disinformation campaigns, which we already seen, for example, in the European elections, where a lot of right-wing populist parties spread false information on the climate issue, where they're really trying to have that as their new subject that they talk about and talk about in false terms. And with the internet, is like other political issues, very easy to spread these false news. You have a very large audience for it, and I think that's also something we really need to address, especially companies like Facebook and Twitter really need to make sure that this kind of targeted advertisement needs to be <laughs> talked about and banned, basically, if it, has, if it contains false information. 
And I think for the IGF, it's important to have in their panels that already talk about disinformation campaigns, that it's important for them to address the issue specifically about the climate issue as well. So I think, yes, for the IGF, I think it's a very good platform, like Carla said as well, from Fridays for Future. I think it's important to address it, which I haven't seen that much before, and I think it's important to address it now. And I think, yes, I'm happy to discuss that further in the breakout sessions. I don't know. <laughs> we already had good content, so yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Leah had a point. Is uh, uh, we were supposed to have uh, Will or someone from uh, uh, Google present here, and uh, you couldn't uh, turn up last minute. So uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, uh, if you would like to join, uh, Max, one or two points as well to these, what, what, what can the IGF community do about it? And why is it not be a bigger issue here? Why is it just our session at the moment really focusing on this? Well, I, I mean, first of all, it's a, it's a start. Um, and um, I guess what I would say is that um, uh, it's a matter of framing it in the context of internet governance, right? That is um, the, the main, um, main challenge or the first step that we have to do. How does it fit into um, the, the internet governance um, remit? It's a little bit like AI, right? AI governance is a very interesting topic and I, I think the format of the IGF is excellent to address it and to deliberate, but I'm not 100% uh, sure how um, much it falls in the, the focus of um, uh, what the IGF is trying to accomplish. And because the IGF is a good platform for many topics, it's also discussing many, many topics, which in the end makes it less um, uh, focused and, uh, and hence um, uh, you know, um, productive in a way. And that's by no means a, uh, dismissing the topic at all. Yeah, thank you. Yes, I was uh, hoping because this uh, climate action is obviously part of the sustainable development goals that this would be something that uh, people would feel stronger about in our IGF community and uh, would focus a little bit more. So hopefully this is actually the start and hopefully next year we will have some proper main sessions just on the climate crisis. Thank you. Uh, so now I think we could uh, open uh, to the, anyone would like to either ask a question to the panel or uh, add a few comments. Um, we have uh, uh, a few minutes uh, and then uh, Gustavo will uh, also let us know if there has been uh, any um, participation remotely. Thank you. So any questions? Thank you, Michael. Hi, my name is Michael Ogia. I work, I currently work for the Global Forum for Media Development, but this is a very much a uh, topic that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I actually just want to very quickly have an intervention say, I've actually already answered that question, Max, and it's a good thing. No, I'm not, I'm not chiding. I mean it in a good way. I mean that, that, and one of my key, one of the key points that I made to address that is that because this endeavor has to be multi-stakeholder. I think that the IGF is, a, is an ideal uh, place to the, for that because it brings together especially um, uh, companies, uh, you know, civil society and governments. And so we need robust public policy. We need more sustainability by design. That's something that companies need to address obviously with public support. And so that's just a very, very quick synopsis of how I think um, this is potentially an, th one of the best place, places to address sustainability and ICT. So if I may just come back. So um, we're actually in alignment. I agree that the format is right. But I would actually suggest that you guys, um, and I would join immediately, create something that is an uh, offset of the IGF that addresses this uh, topic in this format. I absolutely agree that you know communities like um, uh, Extinction Rebellion and the private sector and all the different players should sit in rounds exactly like this one. I just don't think that um, you know it's about internet governance. As someone was pointing out, I think it's two percent of the the global energy and. and you know, and so on and so forth. So I'd be all for, um, I don't know, divide and conquer.
Thank you very much. My name is Wolfgang Benedek from the University of Graz in Austria. I was involved in drafting uh, this uh, charter which uh, we are having in front of us. And I have to say that at the time, climate change uh, was not such an issue as it is now. And in my view, this is a living document. We have environmental sustainability there. We have the basic principle there. But it would need more refinement. So I would like to invite those who feel like uh, to contribute uh, to a, a further development uh, of uh, this provision um, in the context of sustainable development goals so that uh, it is uh, giving more guidance, so to say, also from a human rights perspective. And uh, regarding uh, the issue of how to deal with this, um, I mean, this is uh, the dynamic coalition which deals with internet rights and principles. I'm not sure, do we have already a dynamic coalition which is dealing with climate change and the digital uh, economy? Uh, if that is not the case, then maybe some people should think about it. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, okay, Marion. <clears throat> Thanks, uh, Max. I shall beg to differ. I think this topic today is at the heart of internet governance. If you accept that internet governance is about uh, decisions on the design of these technologies, on the terms of access and use of these technologies, and on the storage and management of the huge, huge amounts of data that is generated by these technologies, then to ignore the environmental implications of the building of the server farms, the uh, environmental impacts of underwater submarine cables, the effects of the amount of electricity needed to cool or indeed heat data centers, then it is impossible to separate issues around climate crisis, extinction, sustainability, the planet. Impossible for me to separate that from anything with internet governance. So I think I would actually counter your point and say what we need is more granularity in showing, just as the Charter has done, exactly where the climate is relevant for every single topic that is traditionally understood as internet governance. Rather than add the climate and stir, we are the climate. This is our environment. So if we want the internet to survive, the planet needs to survive. Thank you. Thank you, Marian. There's another question just there at the back. Yes, I would probably just second that one. But um, I think there are two issues here. One is um, ICT is still something very new. So maybe it's 2% right now, but there's so much new markets being built on this technology, uh, like property technology or IoT. So I think this sector is just going to grow. And if we don't change it from the beginning and give it another direction, uh, we will have the same problem as we now have with cars. Um, a second issue I think is very interesting is how much power and um, money is being put into the digital transformation. And at the same time, we, ha we are in the need of a climate transformation, an ecological transformation. And these two things are always seen as something separate. And it's very wondersome to see how much money could be spent on the other one, the more crucial one, maybe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just uh, uh, we have two more questions. So first, uh, here on my right, and then Max again on my left. Hi. Thank you, um, Alexander Lutz. I'm working for French Green MEP uh, David Comment at the European Parliament. Uh, we had a discussion a bit yesterday about um, how we need to build more bridges between, uh, well, especially tech people and the ones in the environment uh, and climate change. Um, so, I mean, I would actually go more in the direction of what the two last speakers have said, namely that we need to go where people already are uh, and to make them also reflect on subject that they're not really used to. Um, I also think about that, for example, in the realm of climate change, uh, where they have to think a bit more about tech and not just in the terms of it's going to save the day. Um, so my question would more be, how could we make, uh, well, the environment and climate change a bigger topic within IGF? I understand that there is this one session today, which is amazing because it has not been the case until now. Um, but instead of creating an entirely new venue where 
everyone would have to fly again to somewhere else. We could just start something here at HGF. And so who would be the relevant people to talk to in order to make it a way bigger topic uh, next year? Actually, on, on this, um, the numbers I have is more like 4% of global emissions in 2020 are attributed to digital technologies. And again, yeah, you're right, it's completely rising. So what do we do for next year? That's brilliant. Thank you. I think next year the climate crisis is going to be the big theme, so hopefully. <laughs> so, Max, thank you. you can. So, um, I have good news and bad news for you. <clears throat> it's a self-service environment. Um, I remember when uh, Wolfgang, Mariana, and many others, I'm sure, in the room um, started with the Internet Bill of Rights and then started the Dynamic Coalition, uh, I guess about 10 years ago or what? Um, you know, nobody asked and nobody told us what to do and who we could ask. It's, um, I think it's a beautiful thing in a way. The only thing is that you can't ask anybody else to do something. It's really, you know, you can go and write the proposal to uh, create a dynamic coalition right uh, in this minute. And I think that's really empowering, actually. Um, the, just to try again and to, uh, give it a more positive nudge, too. Um, I think the internet is eating the world, and if that's true, then um, internet governance means um, governance of all aspects of um, our human endeavors. And, uh, and hence, uh, you know, the, the argument can be made that um, this is the most important topic and that in every place um, uh, where politics are happening, it should play a major role. Uh, that said, though, I want to point to um, the high-level report, the Age of Inter um, Digital Interdependence, and um, the, there is one option that actually suggests to um, develop more sectorial um, uh, governance discussions. Um, I think it's option three that they're li uh, outlining. And uh, I think in such a scenario where the IGF is evolving and we're looking into uh, new setups, that might very well be a useful um, place for a coalition and for work in this space. However, I think contrary to what um, has been brought up, I don't necessarily think that, you know, if this is the biggest problem of mankind, focusing on uh, something that makes 2% of the um, uh, pollution and the energy consumption might not be the best use of your time. I think using the internet to organize and to bring other people, to draw other stakeholders into this conversation um, uh, might be a better use of, of everybody's time to really drive and organize rather than, um, uh, you know, focus on the internet governance aspect. Well, uh, we need to move on. Thank you, Max. Uh, we need to move on to the breakout group so we can discuss uh, uh, in depth all of these questions. Uh, so we will take uh, one last question. I think it's from... Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, you. Hey, thank you. Great. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak up. Um, my name is Marcel Komeno. I'm from the uh, Youth Internet Governance Forum this year. Um, well, we met first in September uh, in a German context to agree upon uh, some statements. One of them uh, was definitely about the, uh, uh, the climate change and that we wish an uh, eco-friendly internet for the future as we need to live with that future. And uh, this is a thing that we want to bring forward, not just in a national context, but also international context. And we would be happy to work together with other organizations like Fridays for Future and uh, others uh, to come together to uh, make our voice heard. Uh, so if anybody would be interested in any discussions, um, we're at a sustainability corner in the food court uh, every day from uh, one p.m. to 2 p.m. and we would be happy to uh, discuss with you all of our 11 statements. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I think now you can move to our breakout uh, uh, groups. Uh, so um, how it will work is uh, we have uh, just uh, group one, uh, the internet is killing the planet. How can we reduce carbon footprint of the internet dependent technologies? Uh, so, uh, Nick Shore is going to be the facilitator and rapporteur of this uh, uh, group. So, we just follow Nick uh, with his orange card. Um, then we will, ha we will have uh, group two, uh, 
uh, with Chris Adams, sustainability by design, creating rights-based and environmental uh, conscious technologies. Uh, so you could just join Chris on this side of the room. Um, then group three, uh, saving the planet and fighting the trolls, the rise of young climate movement in an era of structured misinformation campaigns and online harassment, uh, particularly important for young females um, these days. Uh, so uh, Leah um, is going to be the facilitator and rapporteur, so just follow the red uh, card, thank you. And finally, we have the human cost of the climate crisis, or to ensure sustainable human development through the internet and protection of rights and empowerment of climate migrants uh, in the online environment. So migrants, because there's a big question uh, if they are called refugees or migrants. Uh, right now, the name is migrants, but uh, is it true? Uh, so uh, June, <laughs> who is our facilitator and rapporteur, can uh, help you more on this discussion. Thank you very much. And June will be going where? Just on this side. Thank you. So we will be back in around half an hour. Um, so please feel free to discuss as much as you would like.
Sachen bei Lutz und also bei Dino alles vermisst. Also ja. Die Max gerade so, dass wir das noch machen würden. Ja. Ja. Das finde ich jetzt auch nicht verkehrt. Ja. 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 Ja.
Thank you, everyone, for the discussions. Uh, I'm uh, calling the groups now for the uh, presentations. So uh, all the facilitators, if they could come and report on each one of the groups. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. So we will start with uh, group two, sustainability by design, creating rights-based and environmentally conscious technologies. So we have uh, Chris Adams reporting. Hello folks, I've got about two minutes to summarize uh, the conversation that we had. I, I urge you will speak to the individual people. Uh, Minda, shall I go or, sh or do you, what shall I do here? We can wait only another minute or so, uh, because we have very little time. Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, it looks like most people are sitting down, so I'll try to run through this in two minutes. If you were in my group, would you please raise your hand so if people are interested, they know who to speak to in more detail. Okay, so we spoke a little bit about solutions, about the fact that there's more to tech uh, and uh, ethics around this than CO2 and e-waste. And we spoke a bit about cryptocurrency, digital, digital economies, and innovation, and whether the Sustainability is a, is, a, is a kind of hamper on this. So we first of all spoke about solutions, and not to be too solution-y, but in many cases there are, there are, are examples of organizations doing the right thing, which, uh, I th which should be rewarded in many, or should be recognized. An example would be Fairphone, who actually have a, relative, who have a much more ethical and considered supply chain. However, the way we currently reward uh, tech companies is that we basically subsidize companies who do shift costs onto the people who are least able to bear these right now. So this is a thing that we should actually be doing something about. But in many cases, there are, uh, there are also, we also spoke about the fact that there are groups doing interesting work that make it easier to have these kind of conversations when uh, in organizations about how things are built uh, and w what the unintended consequences of these things might be. An example would be dot everyone and uh, some of their things, there's some of their events like consequence scanning. Mm -hmm. So there are things out there that, that, that help out. We also spoke about the SDGs because lots of work has gone into finding ways that have indicators to see if we are doing more good than harm. But right now, there is no kind of database to be able to track this or see how organizations are doing compared to each other. Uh, one thing we found there was the, there was a group called WikiRate who were also in this room. Please raise your hand, person. 
who was, who was actually doing some work specifically to make this possible. We also said that in many cases there is a trade-off between a uh, design for privacy and a design for, say, sustainability or design for innovation or something. And we, d we currently tend to look at the upside without really thinking too much about the downside. And we don't really have a way of talking to each other or being able to make trade-offs with this yet. And it feels like that's a thing that we need to explore and could explore in more detail. We also spoke about cryptocurrencies because, of course, we did. Uh, generally, it's about a quarter of all the servers of Earth on Earth that's the same impact of, of cryptocurrency right now based on cryptocurrency's own figures. Maybe we should do something about that, at least not run it on fossil fuels. Um, then we spoke about uh, digital economies, about the fact that we currently reward the wrong behavior. And if we're going to reward the, the, the same behavior we've seen that has resulted in climbing emissions, then maybe we should be doing something or thinking about policy levers, like either a tax on carbon or finding a way to actually propose uh, to tie, say, carbon emissions into how we select uh, who we work with or who we buy services from at an organization or government level, because in many cases, those are the bigger levers uh, than individual action. And uh, once again, when we talk about innovation versus sustainability, because this is a thing that people often say in the context of AI, we do not have good ways to basically talk about the trade-offs, or at least we didn't, but there are groups like climatechange.ai that are now sharing models to allow you to understand this. They're sharing syllabuses, so in, in groups, they, people can educate themselves. So there is some good work taking place, but there is a real need for people inside tech to actually uh, do something with this. We have robots.txt to make search engines work. We do not have a carbon.txt to talk about how the fact that we are, as a group, like, say, the top of the, we, we, we are some of the largest, tech is full of some of the largest companies of the world now, but there's no, co no coherent way to compare which companies are doing better than others right now on an existential problem. And I think that's the stuff we discovered and explored. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too much over two minutes. So yeah, please do speak to any of us afterwards. Raise your hands, folks, again, one more time. Yes, that's it, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, now we're going to group one, the internet is killing the planet, uh, with uh, Nick Shore. Thank you. Thank you, Minda. Uh, so my uh, breakout session discussed the issue of the internet is killing the planet. Um, first of all, thank you to everyone who participated. We discussed the impact of the internet and internet-dependent technologies on the environment, um, and also what you know, further action uh, people feel needs to be taken uh, collectively as governments, businesses, and end users to reduce our carbon footprint. Um, so the group identified several negative, uh, uh, key negative impacts, uh, the first of which was the business models of many tech firms, which are increasingly driven by advertising, knowing more about customers and markets, which in turn leads to increased levels of data uh, consumption. A further move towards streaming uh, is also uh, contributing to this. And there was a question of you know, how, much, uh, uh, how much data really needs to be captured and produced, uh, and how much of these services do we really need. Uh, it was also felt that there was a lack of transparency around supply chains, what our products are built from, and where materials are sourced. Uh, the issue was also raised of the ever-decrease in life cycle of products, um, which is leading to uh, faster deprecation of devices and then uh, contributes to, uh, to, to e-waste. Uh, one further point that was mentioned was that the, uh, the greater affordability of data, uh, of data uh, uh, servers, server farms and stuff actually means that uh, developers are not forced to think in energy efficiency terms when they're developing their software. Um, so then uh, key points that uh, the group raised uh, with regards to what further action can we take uh, to address these issues. Uh, it, was raised that, it was mentioned that we need a, a holistic view of the whole system when we're considering uh, how to uh, promote and develop um, solutions. Uh, it was suggested that a carbon tax um, would provide uh, a commercial incentive on uh, businesses and organizations to be more efficient in, uh, in their use of energy. Uh, it was suggested that uh, uh, it should be built into all projects a consideration of how to develop uh, technology and services in an energy efficient way. 
uh, one of the, uh, the participants uh, cited GDPR uh, is actually something that could also be used in, a, in an environmental context. Uh, under G GDPR, uh, generally, uh, companies now have to demonstrate a requirement um, for the process and the storage of data uh, taken uh, uh, in an energy consumption manner. This could also um, uh, sort of support this. Uh, we need to focus on edge devices because these are particularly disposable um, uh, and, uh, as we mentioned, around the, the life cycle issues. Um, and uh, there's a suggestion about legislation to decrease the amount of background data that's transferred when people are uh, using the internet. Um, responsible investors, uh, responsible investment, engaging investors to make sure that they put requirements on companies uh, that they invest in to consider um, the environmental impacts of their, of their operations. There was also, um, as a counter to this, uh, it was also raised, uh, raised that um, when we consider these policies, we need to remember that uh, we need to remember the disproportionate impact uh, that some of these well-meaning policies could have on underserved regions and the global south, whose key driver is just to get internet access in the first place to support education, um, economic development. So as we continue these discussions, it's really important to make sure that there's collaboration um, across all parties and all regions and communities to make sure that in attempting to, uh, to make progress on one area, we don't inadvertently impact uh, people in another. Thank you. And uh, now uh, two minutes more for group three. And group three is Leah with Saving the Planet and Fighting the Trolls. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, where are the people in my group? Sitting in the back. Yes. Thank you so much for participating. I think we had a very nice, uh, lively discussion that was very hands-on, I think. Um, because I think we exchanged our experiences with online harassments and the, the problems we see in it, also related to... Um, to the climate change issue, obviously, but also to other issues that are mixed up with it, like sexism and racism as well. Um, we had people from NGOs, two journalism students, um, and, well, first we, we talked about, yeah, like I said, experience on online harassment, uh, for example, on Twitter, which um, was one channel that actually reacted to it but didn't really block the person trolling, but yeah, it is a bit difficult to really um, have these companies take the comments down. Then we had um, one experience that was a webinar, webinar on climate change, and um, there were obviously trolls and um, really comments that were very hurting and very, um, yeah, mixed up with false information as well, and the way to tackle this issue um, we said was to respond in it in a calm and very factual way. Um, I come back later to like I, the idea of how to tackle this issue in general because that's what we talked about at the end. Um, we talked about the situation in Brazil specifically because it is, as we all know, a very um, urgent issue, issue there right now that was very much in the news as well with the rainforest and um, talked about how also the state um, and big companies like Big Oil are really participating in, this, in these disinformation campaigns. Um, and how in Brazil, for example, it is also mixed up with racist comments of d indigenous people that are mixed up with um, yeah, trolling on climate activists. Then what is very important at the end that we talked about the possible solutions that we can find for these issues as well. One thing that I said already was that um, if you, for example, moderate a session like a webinar that you can, or also in general on all platforms, that you can respond to um, comments in a calm and factual way, that you can really um, reference sources that are actually scientifically um, reviewed and uh, really get into the, not let the comment stand by itself, but really engage with it. Um, one point that was also raised um, was education and improvement of digital literacy, which is obviously a very big task, but um, something we all agreed on was very important to have people really 
um, realize when they see false information online and really um, deal with that in a, um, in a critical way and differentiate between different sources. Another really interesting point that might be a bit connected to that on a more academic level is that um, the improvement is of research on the specific issue of on harassment of climate activists. There is already research on um, this topic in different contexts, but not specifically on climate activism. Um, and one comment was that um, it is important to see who the perpetrators are, for example, if it's individuals or if it's really targeted campaigns, that we, it needs to be dealt with this in different ways, um, depending on where these comments come from. And that it is very urgent as well to exchange different um, yeah, points of research and to really improve that and to exchange basically best practice as well. For example, um, if we have knowledge on um, the way to tackle the harassment of journalists, that this could also be, yeah, brought together with climate activists and their harassment. And yes, thank you. I think that's it. <laughs> thank you, Leah. And uh, the last group is the human cost of the climate crisis with uh, June Paris reporting. Thank you. Hi, thank, uh, I'd like to thank my group. We had a very interesting discussion and not enough time to do so. Um, but we started yeah, we started off by um, talking about the Maldives as an example, where 400 people live and where it's possible the island will eventually be covered by water. Uh, 400,000, how much? Okay, you'll correct me in a minute. Um, so we looked at, we talked about ways how we can prevent this happening. It, it, where are these people going to migrate to? That's, that was the question. Where are you going to go? Because there's so many islands in the area that are actually sinking. Um, so we talked about reclaiming land and um, um, how the internet um, is having an effect on climate change in terms of we ha we're getting more internet, which is increasing um, demand on, again, it's, it's, a, it's like a cycle. More internet puts more demand on energy. Energy creates climate change. Climate change creates climate migration. I mean, sorry, migration. Um, yeah, same thing. Uh, <laughs> so we looked at the effects of global warming, which is negative. And one comment was to get rid of Amazon. <laughs> Why? Because of ec economic activity is using more energy, which I sort of agree with. Um, so how can we help this? It, for example, um, in the Middle East, um, they've got gra um, grassroot level planning and programs like for growing deserts. Um, and for the future, but for the future, I need, we need to exchange practices. We need to build in ideas. Building islands is a good idea, but I, some of us feel it has an effect on life in the ocean. Um, why are these islands being built and why are we um, doing this sort of development? And this is to attract tourists. Now, is tourism such a good idea? That's another question. Um, one of the comments was, perhaps we should have working tourists or volunteering tourists. So instead of using the energy and contaminating the island, they come to build the islands and make things a lot better. So we also think, um, ask the question, are local people informed about climate change? Do they know about it? Are they educated about it? Um, there are some programs in parts of the world, but if in an island where you depend on tourism, a lot of the local people, they're not going to try to save energy. They're going to try to attract tourism and um, a livelihood that comes from tourism, like jet skis, um, what do you call it, the diving, water sports, that kills the fish, kills the reefs, and kills the turtles. Um, so e even though we depend on tourism, we still need to fix tourism so that this doesn't happen. Um, there was one, um, one of our participants who works in a museum in Germany, 
and they want to include more about climate change um, uh, in terms of um, building a museum. So we think, we also thought technology was not the solution in some cases, and we need to get dimensions right, and we need a new word, degrowth. We've got too much technology, and we thought that we should probably recycle what we've got instead of getting a new phone, a new charger, a new whatever, you send it back to the company, they fix it, and they send it back to you, almost brand new, without giving you a new one, because you have to dispose of these new ones, the old ones, to get the new ones. I also talked, well, I brought up this um, subject. There's a gentleman I know who's actually using old um, mobile phones to create energy. Um, but I didn't actually research this, so I can't really give you the facts. My time's running out. Um, so, we've got sinking islands, less, less rainfall, dependency on farming without rain, and work, we work, so we're working also, some islands are also working like, um, about bringing rain, how to bring rain, but we also said this also involves technology. How can we find a way to do it? How can we bring more rain without using technology? So, the end um, thing is that we, we need the power to drive the technology, but it needs to be controlled. Okay. Any comments from my participants that I forgot to mention? I think, that, I think that's it. Uh, we have only two minutes left. So, unfortunately, I can't open to uh, um, more questions, but I would like just to... F uh, to uh, finish this uh, session with uh, another question, a uh, quick question to the panel, just uh, based on all these uh, outcomes of the breakout session. So what are your rec uh, recommendations for the internet uh, governance community? What do you think we can do in order to promote a more sustainable internet? Thank you, and we can start with Chris. Okay, I think one of the first things that we need to do is recognize that all technology is political. And by saying it's not political, there's a tacit acceptance of the status quo, which is problematic and has failed us on climate over the last 20 years. I think we need a change in the aesthetic around tech. And we need to have discussions around what we value in technology that we use to build the future. Maybe we should be talking about organizations that help get fossil fuels out the ground or help with disinformation on video websites that kind of prioritize clicks over, uh, over the actual science, things like that. I think this is a conversation we need to keep having, having, and I don't think it makes sense to put it in a separate space when this is pervasive and there is no society or economy without an environment. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, quickly, one minute for Christopher. Thank you. Just one recommendation. Let's try and get the scale right. Let's try and understand the dimensions. We are. We have one option of a world that will only be able to feed one billion people by the end of the century or sooner. And we're talking a lot about very particular, very local solutions that will need a long time to scale up. And I think there's a big gap between this. So my recommendation for IGF, always think about the scale of this and if the solutions we're talking about are really fitting the scale. Thanks. Thank you. And the last sec uh, 20 seconds go to Leah. Thank you, Leah. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree with has been said previously and I just really think like I said in the beginning as well that bringing people from the different um, sectors together from the governmental sector from the private sector and the civil society I think this is absolutely crucial in order to really influence each other and exchange ideas on how to tackle this and bringing this into different yeah different panels different sessions as well really having this um, in mind when we talk about the issues of the internet nowadays because I think it's one of the biggest aspects that we need to address in every session, in everything we talk about because yes, like Christopher said, I think it's just the most urgent thing we can talk about right now. Yeah, I think that sums it up. Thank you everyone for coming to this uh, great session and I hope that next year we will have some main sessions on uh, the climate crisis. Uh, so my last two cents I thank everyone. <laughs> uh, so my last two cents for this discussion or for this uh, session is just to give you on your way out, uh, maybe it's not enough for everyone, but one uh, acorn uh, is some practical thing that we can do. We can uh, see the tree and we can offer to anyone who have a space to plant. So um, 
just a small gesture and uh, thank you for everyone that participated in this session.